Hey everybody, Wayne here from the D&D 5e TV and today I'm going to show you how to make dungeon tiles. This is my system that I use uh, for making dungeon tiles out of polystyrene. It's just foam, they're pretty durable. I think they look great and I've learned a lot since I started doing this so I'm going to kind of take you through my process and hopefully you'll dig it. Uh, so we'll give you everything you need to make these out of uh, polystyrene. Stay tuned. All right, so the first thing, just going through things you're going to need, polystyrene. I got this from Home Depot. You can get them in these big sheets here in a package for about seven bucks. And these are the things you're going to need. Some black paint, some white paint, maybe a little brown. You're also going to need a wood burner. This is what I use to make the uh, cuts in the foam. Not really the cuts, but the indentations. We've got our foam. We've got our little square here. You're going to want that to draw some straight lines and a Sharpie. All right, so this is the floor plan I'm working off of. My buddy DM Floyd has created this huge dungeon uh, and rendered it with it fully furnished, as well as the whole story. I'm gonna be recreating this entire dungeon over 100 rooms. So now I've already made this part on the left. That's this hallway along with this room. And I'm gonna be recreating this room to match up with this hall, or this room right here. So this is a 20 by 30 room. Now. When you cut the floor, you have to accommodate for the walls, so make sure that if one inch is every five foot, you add an extra inch and a half for either side of your room. So let's go cut the, I got the floor cut already, let's go cut some two inch walls on the hot wire cutter. Okay, so we've got the hot wire cutter on right here. I've got it set for two inches. Make sure you're ventilated because there are some fumes when it comes down to cutting on the hot wire table so we're just going to slide this through two inches there you go. first piece down the second piece all right so here's your floor we've got the other pieces right here these two are going to go up here these are for the sides and this whew, big motorcycle all right, this is going for the back wall right here. So basically all you have to do is grab your Sharpie, grab your ruler, and mark off the one inch squares. All right, so here I have all of the walls and the floor piled up, drawn up, ready to go ahead and use that hot gun on it. Now I wanted to let you know I numbered these. You can see this. I also numbered this and put the direction the wall is supposed to be on so when you prime it, you don't want to do the bottoms here. But everything should fit on as such, like so. But now that you've got it all done, we're going to move to the wood burner and go ahead and cut these grooves. Okay, so this is the wood burner. I've got the steel tip on it, you can see that. This one has a dial on it, so I set the dial at kind of a medium heat since I tend to bump it and move it, I just tape it down like that. So now, you want to just take it easy. You don't want to go too deep, but you don't want to worry about going deep when you melt this. Because your primer, your black paint, will fill it all in. And if you just go slow, with a light hand, you'll be able to craft each and every tile with a little bit of precision here. And it's okay if it's a little wiggly because the beads in the styrofoam tend to make it that way. And you'll just go and you'll trace every one kind of round the corners so that you don't make it look like it's completely cut out like a grid, like they're individual stones. When you get it like that, you can also add in cracks just by the faster you drag it, the harder it won't melt so fast anyway. And uh, yeah, so you can make some details like that, some scratches, claw marks, maybe make a, a brick that's come off. Add your detail like that, and uh, yeah, you continue to go all the way around. So we're gonna do this for every single one. Okay, so we've got all of our grooves cut, all our tiles kind of uh, laid out here. And we're just gonna start adding the black paint. Now I do use regular acrylic and uh, it's just black and you can get it pretty thick now here's the thing 
when you're painting this, go ahead and be liberal with it because in the grooves, you want to kind of go down in the grooves and if the grooves are kind of deep, you're able to fill them in just a bit and get them all black. Make sure you get into all the cracks. But that way it kind of, kind of takes up a little bit of the space, if, especially if you've gone a little bit too deep and it's a, too big of a crack, doesn't look consistent, you could easily just fill that with the paint as well. So you're just going to want to clean, uh, paint all of this. Make sure you get all down in the cracks. Go over it. If you put too much paint, you can get a little bit out by just rubbing your brush this way. And uh, yeah, go over the top. Make sure you get everything done like this. So we're going to go ahead and paint the entire room with the black and then let it dry for a few hours at least. Uh, best to just do it and let it go overnight. So if you have that, just go ahead and paint it overnight and let it sit and then we'll come back and we'll do the sponge treatment to it and make it look like real dungeon walls and floors. All right, so here you can see I've got some paint laid out, a little bit of black, a little bit of brown, and more white. So always remember too when you're mixing your colors, add dark to the light. That'll save a lot of paint. So we're just gonna mix up some gray here and it doesn't have to be blended completely into a gray. You can leave some of the swirls and stripes because what we're gonna do is we are going to brush it, or not brush it on, we're not gonna dry brush it, we're actually gonna sponge paint it like the um, Scotty does. So add a little brown for some, a little bit of flavor there. And that's pretty much all you need to do to prepare your paint. Now once you have that, I use a little sponge here. This is just a nice little spongy deal makes doing the dungeon tiles really easy. So what we're going to want to do is uh, we're just going to dip the sponge in here. Like so, get that out of there and just go for it. Try not to do the same pattern. Try and rotate your sponge a little bit. Go over it. And there you go. You can leave different modeled parts of it. You can use your fingers to press down to get different things. So make sure you do the edges on everything. It's real quick, real easy. Looks great. I think it's a fantastic looking or great way of doing it. So we're going to do that to all the pieces. So just keep doing that to every single one. A little bit more paint. Real quick. And there you have it. Maybe a little more on that guy. Now you can go back over this and do some detail work if you want to add different colors or different things like that, or even different textures or highlights. It would be great. So we're going to go ahead and paint up all these right now. And then I'll come back and we'll put it together. All right, so here are the finished pieces. You can see this right here turned out pretty good. Dries a little darker. I've got some brown in there I did for maybe some dried blood or dirt. And we're gonna go ahead and glue them together. So this is where your numbers come in handy and your arrows. So here I didn't paint over it so so badly. So it's 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 four and it's going this way. So it goes right there. And this is where I use this tacky glue. Now I like this because it's clear. It's also exactly what the name says. It's tacky so it holds really well it's really nice other like Elmer's glue kind of is still really wet and sometimes it doesn't for this stuff doesn't really stick this will stick enough to where it lifts it up so it's just a matter of gluing it in place and it's really good because then when you start putting your other pieces on you've got some time to work with it doesn't drip so much you've got it sticks to the foam really nice like this so we just start gluing our pieces down to the foam. These oops. Put some more glue on this. This one you can see I kind of blacked over it a little much, so I can't tell what number it is on that. But go ahead and you can push them together, make sure they're lined up nice and straight. Do the same thing with this piece. Again, I kind of covered over that one. 
we'll put the crack on the inside here. And one line usually does the trick because it does spread out and you're gonna want that. But it sticks on really nice, so even tacky, it just you can pick it up that way too. I really I really like this this glue. So last piece goes on. And once you're done, you can press it down. Make sure that the glue spreads on the bottom of the wall. Push them together as you need. And that's pretty much it. That is how I make the rooms now. Same thing goes with the with the dungeon tile floors, hallways, and things like that. Maybe I'll do a quick review of how to do a hallway, but you pretty much do it the same exact way as far as painting and assembly. All right, so that's it. That's my video on how to make a foam room for your dungeon tiles, your polystyrene dungeon tiles. I had a lot of fun making this. I'm, I've got a lot of rooms to go. So if you've got any comments, please leave them in the comment section. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and share this video if you know other people that want to get into this. If you've got something that you've made, would love to see it. Please send us a link. Uh, post it on some of the group pages out there. But uh, anyways, enjoy. We'll see you next time on D&D &D 5e TV.